Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Johnny. Today is the third in a series of videos I'm doing about gotchas when working with paginated reports. There's little things that might just catch you out. Today, we're going to talk about the pitfalls of page sizes. So, if you're coming from a Power BI background, you're going to be used to a nice fixed report page size. If we take a look at a report, you'll see that you get this nice 1280 by 720 resolution canvas. If you were to publish this up to the Power BI service and export this to PDF or to PowerPoint, that would perfectly fit on a nice A4 piece of paper. And it's impossible for you to go beyond the boundaries of this page size. If I take this KPI card in the top right hand corner and try and expand it to make it bigger, you can't. Once you hit the edge, it stops. With paginated reports, you have to be much more careful. Now remember the report we were working on in the last video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll stick a link for you here. That report was a nice basic sales report, showing revenue, cost, margin and sales unit quantity. If I run that report, then by default it renders in a web view and everything looks absolutely fine. But imagine you want to print off that report. What you can do in the ribbon is toggle to a print layout. And what's happened here? We're now missing a column. Our sales unit quantity has disappeared. If I click on next, navigate to page two, there it is. So it's overflowed the page, which let's face it, is a terrible user experience. Boo! So how do we fix this? Well, we need to get a little bit more familiar with the way page size properties work in paginated reports. And also we need to get a better understanding of how big a piece of paper is. Now, if we head back to the design view of the report, if I right click on the grey space around the report body, I can select report properties. And this first tab will give me the information about my page setup. So we can see here I'm set to a portrait orientation and I'm set to A4 paper size, which means a width of 21 centimetres and a height of 29.7 centimetres. Now I could decide to change my paper size, but A4 is pretty standard for printing. And if my report was really wide, then I could set it to landscape orientation. But I'm going to stick with portrait. If I close this window and make sure that my properties pane is selected. I can see that the page size properties are represented in the properties pane over here. Now if I click on the actual body of my report, you can see that the properties over on the right hand side have changed. So I get a different set of properties here. So the body of my report is set to 200 millimeters wide or 20 centimeters. And you can also see that body width represented in the ruler that you see at the top of the page. This is showing 20 centimeters wide here. I know that my report is set to be A4 size. And I know that A4 paper is 21 centimeters or 210 millimeters wide. So I should be able to set the body of my report to 210 millimeters, right? Let's go give that a go by coming over to the right here, changing this property. So that's given a bit more room for us to work with on the report. So let's make a few of these columns a bit wider. Let's now take a look. So that hasn't worked. I mean, I've just made my table wider, so it's no surprise that it doesn't fit on the page anymore. In fact, I'm now missing two columns. If I go to the next page, sales margin and sales unit quantity have both overflowed. So what have I done wrong? Well, if I go back to my first page, you'll notice that there is actually white space around the table on my report. In fact, from a usability and readability perspective, perhaps it doesn't actually make sense for this table to go right to the edge of my paper. The amount of white space around the report body is actually controlled by a margin property that's available as part of the report properties. Again, if I go back and look at the report in design mode, I'll see down here, margin property, which by default is set to two centimeters on each edge. So if my A4 page is set to 21 centimetres wide, 
I actually need to take into account the margin as well. So if I subtract two centimeters from the left of the report, two centimeters from the right of the report, that's 21 centimeters minus four. So actually the report body I've got to work with is 17 centimeters. That does seem a little bit narrow to me though. So what I can do is actually alter that margin property. I'm going to set it to one centimeter on each edge to give myself a little bit more room to work with. So now my 21 centimeter wide page width, uh, less one centimeter on each side means I've got 19 centimeters to work with. Now I can set the correct width on my report body. So if I click into the report body here, come up to the size property over here, and I can set that size to 190. Except I can't, that hasn't worked. And it hasn't worked because of the contents within my report body is already wider than 190 millimeters. Before I can reset that report body size, I'm gonna to have to shrink the width of this table first. So I've now made the edits to my reports, make sure that those column widths can fit. And that means that when I now come over to my report body size property, I can now set this to 190. And if I run the report now, everything fits and we're good to go. Yay! But you still need to be cautious of how these page sizes behave. If I return back to the design view on my report and decide I'm going to add an extra column. So from my data sets over here on the left hand side, I'm going to take the continent name and I'm going to append that onto the start of my report. Now when I run this, I'm right back to where I started. Where's my sales unit quantity gone? Again, if I go to my next page, it's overflowed. And that's because the body size properties in Paginated Report Builder are not fixed. As soon as you add more content to your report, it will automatically grow. So you need to be really careful when making any edits. One tip I'd give is to add some kind of visual aid to your report so you can see where the edge of your page ought to be. If we go back into the report designer again, we have here a placeholder for the report title. If I select that, and in its size property, specify that to be the width of the report body I want to use. So let's set this to 190 millimeters. That now fits the full width of my 190 millimeter report body. And if I decide to add constant name in here again now, I get a visual cue over here in the right hand corner. This white space here signifies that I've run out of room. That means we're going to break the ability to print out this report effectively. As an alternative to using that report title placeholder, what you could do instead is use the information that's in the report footer. So I could take this execution time down here and align that to the right hand side of my page. And once again, if I add an additional piece of information, I now see that this white space here means that I need to either remove some columns from my report or make a decision about changing my page size properties. So if you want to maintain the ability to print off the reports effectively, keep an eye out for your page size setup. You might need to get creative, perhaps if you want to make sure it still fits on a page, you need to remove some of the columns or possibly look at using a smaller font size. Or you can look at changing the page orientation to make that wider or even change the page size altogether. Now the report we've been working on is still nowhere near finished and it's still pretty ugly. If you tune into the next video, we'll take further steps to make sure this report's a bit more presentable and we'll be calling out more gotchas as we go. I hope that's been useful. As always, if you've got any questions or feedback, please don't be afraid to slide them into that comment section below. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow along for more content about Power BI, and especially if you want to follow this series about paginated reports, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.